Hey guys, Kuzo here, back with another video as it goes. Well, video, live stream, whatever. <laughs> back with another live stream. So, I'm just gonna copy some links here, like normal. And bam, shoot. all ready to go here let some people roll in got 16 people already look at that look at that and all right that is very loud for me probably not very loud for you guys though i've noticed that things that are loud for me over here aren't as loud for you guys <laughs> As we get some get some sketching here, I was doing some different face uh, shapes earlier and also last night. So uh, my my facial shapeage game might be a little weird right now. Just in general, also just drawing uh, right now might be a little strange compared to normal. Only because for some reason when I go to do that type of stuff, I get a little rusty on everything else. Even though I just did all the other stuff, it's kind of like solidifying everything into your mind uh, new, new concepts even though they're not quite new I'm just reintroducing things to myself that I have slowly that have slowly deteriorated out of my tiny little brain <laughs> All right. I should try to remember what I've been doing instead of just Hey, what's up, everyone? Rolling in. What's up, Captain Nug? What's up, Emerson? What's up, Melon Fruit? What's up, Funky Party Kitten? What's up, Dark Artist? What's up, JoJo? What's up, The Gladiator? What's up, Nana? What's up, Astro? What's up, Whirl? It's Yvig World. So, <laughs> Whirl. So, I. And it's a bit harder for me to just say. Um, move this over. All right. Uh, Emerson says hello. Hey, what's up there? Uh, five stick man or stick man? It's five t uh, tick. Let's say tick. Make that very very clear. Tick man. <laughs> Because uh, when, when is the tutorial for Torso on Patreon coming? So I actually considered not recording or not actually live streaming today to get that done. Um, I should I should have it done tomorrow. Should have it done tomorrow. Yeah. Because even if I did it tonight, it wouldn't be up tonight. So I should have it up tomorrow. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Tick, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should I study the human bones? Um, if you want to. Uh, it's not super important. You, got, you should have a general placement, though. General placement idea. Because, like, collarbones are important. The spine, you know, it... Do you know what the spine is? It's good to kind of know the basic shape of one vertebrae because they're all relatively the same. Some of them are, you know, a little different, but they're all relatively the same. So you pretty much learn most of the spine if you learn one vertebrae, which, I mean, you're just thinking about one, like, basic shape of a vertebrae. It's like, yeah, you know, that's the basic shape. I, not, nothing crazy. I'm not going to go too into it. Like, there's obviously more detail to it than there's, you know, your discs. but And then stuff like skull is good to know pretty well um doesn't have to be perfect but it's good to know pretty well uh the rib cage you don't have to know it but it's not something that's super hard to get down um i would say you don't have to learn it right away but the basic shape of the rib cage is very i think that is an important shape to understand this is essentially the rib cage there 
and then collarbones are important because of where they go and connect to the shoulder and then from there you know you do this and then you know you got like the hips I don't even know the hips completely that well to be honest this is my this is my hip shape should probably get into that because I know the ball of the leg ends up connecting in <laughs> ball of the leg ball of that big part of your leg connects in there somewhere it looks like it has a vertebrae head <laughs> It looks like it has a vertebrae head. Let's let's go with it, guys. <laughs> no, 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 let's not put any like skin on it. Let's just put bones. Vertebrae head. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, and then there's two bones in the arm. Don't know exactly how those connect. Uh, see, this is like the extent of my knowledge of bones. But that's that's why I'd say this is actually kind of important. At least this far you know this much knowledge of bones is important and then from there is muscle structure over it hey what's up 39 people in 20, 32 likes good to see everybody I don't know what happened earlier. Whew, I did some bad realistic heads or, or different shaped head sketches. Whew, those things were mean looking in the grossest way possible. <laughs> they just did not look good at all. I did fix some of them a little bit. Well, okay. See, I say they don't look good. This one, I did this one. And it looks nothing like what I was going for. This one looked worse than what it did. This one looked way worse than what it did. I like this creepy music. It is kind of creepily quiet though. Don't worry, we'll get into some more uh, anime stuff here in a sec. I was literally doing this right before the stream. I took the thumbnail picture, did another couple, and then I came in here to what you would consider my office. My, my apartment's kind of set up a little weird because <laughs> my life is primarily revolving around art. Uh, I made my apartment revolve around art entirely. Actually, that's pretty much how it's always been. <laughs> hmm. And see, right now I'm getting down like basic proportions. Because as you can tell when you really look at this, what's up, Limits Draws? Hey, what's up, Felix? What's up, Asian King? I'm going through some health issues and I really I, I really stopped it it really stopped me from drawing that sucks AJ King I I do I, I don't know your health issues and I don't know how bad they are but I do know oh that's not very happy <laughs> oh that's a little too epic for it let's we'll go back to this thing. but um, I do know I do know how it feels to be hindered from health issues and not be able to draw uh, very well, especially when you're focusing on either the pain, uh, just whatever's going on. I don't know if yours are permanent, but that always sucks. Hopefully you make it through it, man. I believe in you. Even, even, it might make you feel better to even just don't have any expectation. If, if you're having a health issue, health crisis, and and you really feel like you, you feel bad that you haven't drawn at all i mean just doodle don't have any expectation of yourself if you're already having problems go ahead and just doodle some stuff it doesn't have to be good 
and don't worry about it being good because if you worry about it being good it's only going to make you more frustrated about your situation maybe make you feel worse um, so just take things easy Good evening, says Speedy. Well, good evening to you, too. Hey, what's up, Kosh? What's up, really smallent? Smallent? <laughs> Art of Lunacy. What should I draw? I'm not sure. What page are you... What page are you on on, on in Bounty's Gate? Um... I'm on page, I think 20, 19 or 20, uh, but um, like I mentioned in some of my other videos recently, uh, or live streams more so, uh, I've been taking about a week, this is I think the fifth day, to brush up on a lot of stuff that I need to brush up on and kind of tighten some ends of my art and uh, Right after that, we're gonna keep doing that at a slower pace, at a normal practicing pace. But this has definitely strengthened my resolve in wanting uh, to go faster on Bounty Skate. So that way I can do things a lot faster, get gestures down. Um, my lines are a lot more fluid. And getting some very specific anatomy things down. But, by the way, I am very excited. Uh, I'm, I'm more excited than I was for Bounty's Gate. It sounds weird to say about your own, your own series, but I have big um, problems with like insecurity issues with my own, with my own work. And uh, I don't know, every time I actually go over what I've been drawing, it kind of helps a little bit. Or not what I've been drawing, what I've actually been working on, you know, uh, with the story and stuff. Sometimes you you do something and you're uh, you're inspired by it, you're you believe in it, and then you don't look at anything and you second guess yourself. And then sometimes if you just go back and look at what you have actually constructed, sometimes depending on if it was good or not. In this case. Uh, I gain a lot more confidence when I go back to what I've done and been like, oh, I actually was thinking a little bit more in depth than what my, the inner self, the inner inner fear of that I, I create for myself uh, thinks of my own work. Then again, you got to watch out uh, and understand that art, there are legit, legitimate criticisms that can be taken away from looking at your own work and other people looking at it and saying what's wrong because I know my work's not perfect but it's much better than my mind is telling me it is watch out same face, same face syndrome same, same face syndrome guys watch out <laughs> people are crazy Because this looks exactly like Owen. 
Did you draw backgrounds? Yes, I draw backgrounds. Did you watch my newest video? Maria time? I drew a background. It was a sketchy background, but... Yo! I draw backgrounds now. Is my iPad dead? My other iPad? No, it's at 44%. First of all, yes, I draw backgrounds. Second of all, here, let me go, I'll go to a new one and I'll go to an old one. So let me go here, uh, what is it? No, share. Um, It took me a second because yeah. so this is stuff that I, I've done already so this is a background it's a normal background <laughs> normal people dead and stuff this is from Ordinal Tempest and yes I did all this by hand well it was it was digitally but I did all of it like it's not stock photos or anything like I designed this whole background and I did the perspective and I did everything in it so Yes, I do do backgrounds. I just don't do them a whole lot here because it's there's almost no use to doing them here. Like, what's what's the what's the benefit of doing them right here right now? You know, this is a pretty a pretty fun page for me. You guys haven't really seen this stuff. But this is my earlier work. Which, by the way, Noir Caesar has an app. So this is my older work with them. Uh, I have another uh, older project with them as well, uh, Arms of the Dragon. So that's my earlier work. If any of you were interested in my earlier work, that is with them. Let's see if I can show you guys one more that I thought was pretty cool. I can find it. Huh. That is strange. Oh, I bet I know why. I bet I know why. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, I couldn't find one of the one of the folders, but it makes sense why I can't actually find it. So, uh, it's pro I probably have it on here, but I, I'm I'm not gonna look for it. It's fine. Uh, you know, it'd be kind of cool to show you guys. But it was one of my the backgrounds that I actually I really liked it. I wonder if I have it on my phone. I feel like I screenshotted it. But yeah, I do backgrounds. Backgrounds are one of those things that aren't hard. They're just tedious. And I always I always mention this. If they're not hard. They're tedious. And I don't really do them on here because, like I said, it would just be... I mean, I, I can do them on here if we really wanted to, but I kind of just leave them out. I might do them sometimes, though. Can I find it? Probably not. I feel like I screenshot it. I feel like I screenshot it at one point, and I was going to share it on the socials. But I guess I didn't. Nah, I can't find it. Oh well. It was a really cool background, though. I liked it. And the background I was going to show you was all freehand, so that was... <laughs> That was one of the, the upsides too, it's pretty cool. Um, anyways, uh, show us how to draw a small city.
Can I read that? Uh, at Noir Caesar. Rad like the faces. Thank you very much, tradesmen. What's the first styles did you use realistic or anime when you started? I used anime completely. Dragon Ball Z was my first style. Then it went Naruto, then it went Bakuman, and also uh death note and from there it kind of just progressed with like internet work online and then uh the newer series that i've i've studied as well what's up says aiden 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 uh aziz i'll call you aziz <laughs> what's up aziz I like the Fully Cooly poster, right? It's pretty cool. I like it too. Alright. Uh, like I said, you can find the manga at Noir Caesar. Just look up. I think it's N O I R or Noir. Noir? Noir? However you spell Noir. <laughs> I always switch around the I and the I and the O. I'm, I'm really bad at. Uh, It's N O I R. <laughs> I was right. So at least I wasn't I wasn't completely wrong. But they have an app too, so um, alright, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and you know, I should have had some like references ready or something. You know, I should go grab like a death note volume, huh? Because their realistic faces are pretty, pretty good. See, this is looking decent, okay? I can admit this is looking decent. I'm not upset with this face here compared to the other faces I did. But once we go into perspective, things start getting all weird. Anatomy is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. It's just very hard in the moment and hard to grasp in the moment. I thought I would never get it either. Just like earlier, I didn't think <laughs> drawing these heads was possible. We like to go directly to the negative. Um, uh, there's this thing I watched recently. They're saying, if I, if I tell you, do not think of a bear. Don't, don't think of a bear. What'd you just do? Tell me, what'd you do? You thought of a bear. There, you thought of a bear. Don't even tell me you did not try to think of a bear. So, the person, I, I believe it was Jordan Peterson. It, or maybe it was someone else. It was someone else. I, maybe <clears throat> maybe it was Jordan Peterson. I don't know. I saw it on uh, the reels on YouTube. And um, <laughs> a bear. Yeah, exactly. I thought of a chicken. Well, good job, Prince. <laughs> uh, basically... They're skiers. How do you think skiers can go through all these trees without hitting trees? If all they thought about was don't hit the tree, what are they going to do? They're going to look at the tree because they're thinking don't hit the tree. So they're looking at the tree. And if you think follow the path, you're going to think about the path. You're going to look at the path and try to only follow that path. So if you're sitting there thinking this is too hard, this is impossible, I can't do this, what are you going to be looking at? This is impossible. This is too hard. And I can't do this. So 
That's why also being mean to yourself some kind sometimes can be uh, detrimental. Sometimes it works for people. Um, it worked for me for a while. Being very harsh on myself uh, was a thing that I, I that I like doing. <laughs> And being like, you can do better than this. You're stupid. But there was a point in time where I had to start praising the things that I did right. Because even though I was a pretty strong person, um, it eventually wore down on me throughout like eight years of time <laughs> practicing, you know. So it was like a long time that it wore down on me. Because there was a point where... I was actually, you know, I was actually decent at drawing, but I kept on still telling myself I sucked. And it was a little detrimental, so I basically had to start taking a, a step back and asking myself, okay, is there something good about this? There is. What's bad? This is bad. Let's fix it. So I tried to learn how to praise myself. I learned how to properly critique my own work, basically. I remember someone saying, is anything truly impossible? I believe a few things are. In current standards. See, it's starting to have a better structure to it. So let's go ahead and I know we've been sitting here drawing heads this whole time and I wonder how well this is going to do after stream. <laughs> People are just going to be like, what are we doing? What's this guy doing over here? He's drawing a bunch of heads. Alright, so let's do something different. Let's take the top of the head, make it the head. But, so now we got the top structure of the skull set here. Now let's go ahead and make the person uh, a different weight. Maybe a little bit older. Make him... I should have just entitled this di uh, practicing different face shapes or something, you know? This looks better than these. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what was the hardest thing for me to learn with art? Whew, that depends on the time period um, and what I knew at the time. I would have to say just in general, anatomy was one of the hardest things for me to learn because it took me so long because I didn't take the fundamentals seriously. That's why it was so hard. But when I took fundamentals seriously, like actually learning form and how to move uh, basic shapes into perspective, everything else started to, um, it, it, it fell into place a little easier. Uh, from there, I would have to say the form of different facial shapes, such as these, is probably one of the hardest things for me to learn. Currently, right now, this is definitely one of the harder things for me to learn because then I can move my basic anime head in any perspective I want, essentially. But once it comes to these facial shapes, 
it gets a much harder because there's a lot more form involved. A lot more form involved. Someone said how to draw feet. I would say break it down into... Um, first, you want to know how to actually draw the base of the foot, which is this. We're going with a right foot. If you're facing at someone, it would be their left. You want to at least be able to draw the under silhouette of the foot because then the top of the foot is going to overlay like this. And then we're going to have this here, ankle here, and then bam, you, you have a basic foot there. A basic boy foot for you. I break the foot into about uh, four part, three parts, four parts. One, two, three, four. I break it down into all the toes here, big toe, this part, and this whole part. That's how I break down my feet. And when you look at feet, you can you can kind of break it down like that too. Are you four short in the body parts? You want to learn how to uh, draw these things like basic shapes in perspective first before you be able to like draw like a bunch of other stuff and like full on anatomy and arms in perspective is much harder. So you want to learn how to at least draw, you know, the shape of the arm in its essential form like this. Just that. And then you'd want to be able to then learn how to take a cylinder, move it towards you, take this shape, which is essentially a cylinder like this, but then it has a bulge like this because of the muscles, so you're looking at a shape like this, essentially. And the best way, and then you can do this, cylinder, which is what we're doing there, boom, and then we add this onto it, and then we put this behind it, and bam, you have foreshortening. Uh, I'm gonna actually be making a specific foreshortening video after which by the way the next learn how to draw anything video will be coming so yeah love it how much it takes to learn drawing and be able to make manga a lot you can make manga at any point we got 115 people in here and 81 likes 81 likes what is up with that 81? Hmm. There must be a glitch or something going on, right? Nah. Right? That's crazy. <laughs> nah, yeah, that's that's totally wrong. 81. That's oh, hey, 90. Wow, that's weird. Just jumped up like that. Huh. Come on, we gotta catch them all. Catch all those likes. <laughs> uh Anyways, so yeah, it takes a while to learn uh, enough to be able to draw proper manga. To just be able to draw manga, you can draw manga at any point. You know, I actually might do a uh, a full-on perspective practice video on, on the main channel, for the main channel, where it's me literally just practicing like perspective for like straight 19 minutes. My own version of practicing perspective because everyone would need to practice at a different level. Um, this is essentially my perspective practice here.
one mistake I had, uh, even recently, is I would be making the thighs too long. I'm going to watch out for that. At least that was my problem. I don't know if that's going to be anyone else's problem. But that was a problem of mine recently. Little things like this creep up in, uh, in your work if you don't pay attention. This is why practice is so important. And this perspective is, feels a little strange. This is exactly why you work on this stuff constantly. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that I don't know if I was following the guidelines I actually set for myself completely properly. I feel like this foot should probably be over here more based on the way I did this, because I did this here, so that means it's not going to change that drastically. Yeah, it might. It might be a little off. It might be a little off. I can't tell how much, though. I need to get back to doing some studies. By the way, I don't know if the Patreons are still around from the time I did the Your Art Sucks uh, mail-in, and uh, like I said, I already had a winner chosen. I don't even know if it's the same person that I chose, which I'm going to keep because I chose them when they were there, uh, is still in the Patreon, but that's either going to be the next YouTube video or the next one. But I think it might just be the next one we do. So I think that'll be fun. We're going to get back on that. And we're also going to start doing it on the Patreon again. Uh, going to do at least one more. I don't know how many. But uh, hey, we got 123 people in, in here and 108 likes. 108 likes. Good to see. Good to see. But uh, hopefully the video does well on YouTube. I think it could do well if I uh, craft the thumbnail and everything properly. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Let's see. Let's let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Let's move this leg for a second. Do, do, do. Yay! Thanks to all you guys watching the new video. The new video has been doing okay. It's been doing okay. If we were to compare it to my stuff about eight months ago, it's doing horrible. But a lot of things have changed by YouTube and stuff since then. So all right it's not that much better i'm starting to get a little lazy with my lines i need to think a little harder i need to make sure i don't get too lazy oh i wasn't even showing you guys that eh, it looks all right it's not perfect uh, hmm. Hmm. i was gonna go over it but See, it's always hard to draw stuff like this in perspective because, I mean, I could always, I could sit here for days and do like gesture stuff like this.
to do stuff like that, but drawing something feeling like it actually standing there within a perspective on the ground, definitely a little bit harder. This stuff has a lot of lenience to it when you do these type of uh, poses. What's up, uh, uh, Kuzo? When you actually started learning how to draw, the fundamentals were you in? Were you still in school? Mm. Uh, hardcore? No. Um, I tried learning some perspective in school, and I tried learning it when I didn't understand it quite. I knew some of the rules, but when I tried to practice some of the rules, I didn't understand some of the concepts on how two-point perspective works. So when I put the points too close to each other, I didn't understand why it was doing what it was doing. Because when you put them too close together, things get super warped. Uh, stuff like that because a lot of like perspective when you base it on like buildings and roads and stuff you, you notice a lot of buildings and roads they're all very parallel to each other they're all very boxy so they're all based on this kind of you know structure there are buildings like this so once you go into perspective you these this stuff is really easy these roads are straight, so you're going to have a straight line in perspective. But if you had something then converging like this, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And then on top of that, if you had a triangular building, that's even different. It's a bit different. And uh, a world's kind of built around that, and you never really find anything where you do find stuff, but it's more rare, where you find something where there's two... Uh, vanishing points like this right next to each other and there's a guy standing right here this is just just a nice little basic idea of what I'm trying to display there's a guy standing here like this Ooh. actually I need to get faster at this just sit here and do a couple of these All right. now if you look at these vanishing points and if you try to draw something in them based on the vanishing point, like, like look at this. That is a two-point perspective cube based on these vanishing points. That doesn't look right. It looks super weird. So I didn't understand some of that stuff when I was when I was working on it. And same thing goes with three-point perspective. When you have, let's say, this is a zoomed out version, just for uh, argument's sake, um, let's say the person's like this big in here. So that's more realistic because that looks more like they could be standing on a sidewalk of some sort, you know? But, you know, in the, in the midst of a sidewalk and stuff like that, and then if you had like stuff like this, you know, you know, buildings that can follow this and then buildings that can follow that one and this looks a lot more natural you know it just, it just does it, it works uh, and then you uh, with three-point perspective you wouldn't want to make it too drastic because if you go too drastic with this third point that's going down that we can't see right now what's gonna happen is it's gonna warp just like it warped here and we could just follow this three-point perspective like this. And it gives a cool little clear view. Of course, this guy doesn't necessarily fit into that now because of the way it's going. I drew him differently. And yeah, so I, I didn't understand those concepts, but because the moment you, you go past these points, I don't know, so it, I haven't really explored that too much, but I mentioned how I feel like if you were to go past this, if you had a scene that would look like this, if you were going into a perspective 
past this point but still following this vanishing point it warps your object unless you take this and you start curving it at the point past this line so if i start curving this line but i'm still following it for this it gives a more so uh, it's warped but almost gives this wide angle lens view i'm not even sure i i would like to either study it or maybe read one of those books or find out why uh what to do or why not to do this <laughs> i don't know the exact answer on this specific thing uh could you draw a samurai helmet uh not necessarily off the top of my head um, if I were to do it off the top of my head, I know they have mad faces, so you what you would do something like this. You could even even have had like an eye hanging down, what and then Oh, oh, this is more of like a one of those masks that I was thinking about samurai helmet I don't know all I know is it kind of looks like a armadillo shell on the back part <laughs> as these things going on as those things going on I know some of them are kind of like depending on the helmet you look at. That type of stuff. What did I do when I started taking drawing seriously? Um, I thought I was taking it seriously when I went to try. Hey, we got 144 people in here. Good to see everybody. Um, I started, when I started taking it seriously, uh, start sketching something uh, I, I when I thought I was taking it seriously I thought I was going to draw manga and I thought I was just trying to make my stuff look like the other artists uh, that I that I loved but I didn't know how to make it look like those artists so I sat there thinking I was being serious when the truth is these artists knew a level of art that I didn't necessarily understand at that point because I didn't know what fundamentals were uh, so, but the moment I understood how to be serious about art, that's, and stop being naive, um, I started practicing the fundamentals such as perspective, form, then eventually down the line value and uh, color theory. What you got to realize is value and color theory go hand in hand, as value is uh, important to coloring in its own right doesn't mean you have to know value perfectly but it, you, you should know a good basic of value uh, and uh, something to know about me as an artist I learned how to do black and white much earlier on than I learned how to color or even do values but the thing about values because value also goes with lighting as well so that's something to keep in mind but when you when I learned value and lighting it made my blacks and whites ten times better <laughs> because I understood lighting so I could make my my actual blackouts and the shines on the blackouts look correct they actually looked like they're supposed to be there compared to the randomness I would do beforehand. I didn't understand what I was doing. And even if I was doing it and it looked okay, I didn't understand why it looked okay, which is a very important thing in art, to understand why, even if you did it, why something looks okay. So if you did something that looks cool and you can't replicate it, there's a big chance on what you didn't know why it looked that way why it looked good because if you knew why 
you would try to do that again, right? I mean... As they say, knowledge is power. Okay to move at a steady pace. I just needed to slow down a tad bit to think a little bit more. I wasn't thinking a whole lot when I was doing this. And it's okay when you know something really well, but right now I'm trying to solidify some new things that I've been adding on to my arsenal. Which some old habits were starting to pop back in. Isn't it hilarious how I mentioned how much I hated the sketchbook at first? And now look at me. I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it. Which, by the way, my other sketchbook is still stuck in a locker. I've already contacted my... <sighs> These apartments sometimes kill me. Do I have hair drawing tutorials? Uh... I do have some on my Patreon, yes. Um, and I actually have a really old one that's still whole on my YouTube channel. Really old. It's like three, four, maybe five years old. I don't know. It's pretty old. It still holds um, value to it. But literally the, the concept of it is if there's a center of hair, your hair shape is basically this, this general thing here. From there, you can move it downwards. It's typically always one, one strand longer than the other. You pull in, and then you can pretty much build upon this based on either the hairline or a different uh, kind of pattern you would go with. And of course, you might be like this, uh, maybe I don't want it all connecting there. You could always get rid of some of the connections. It's really up to you, but that's a general idea. Uh, same goes with long hair. The only difference is it's super long. And of course, when it comes to wavy hair, you're getting into a bit of a different territory. So it really depends. That's the basic rundown of it. You talk about fundamentals, but what are they? Perspective, anatomy? No, anatomy is not a fundamental. Uh, it's perspective, form, value, and color theory. Some people would say color theory isn't valid, but it is valid. It's like saying, it's basically saying certain colors look aesthetically pleasing to others, but like with others and to people, but technically it's objective. It, it's it's an opinion because it's a general because the general masses feel that these colors go good together but not every person can think thinks that because it is more of an opinion based thing but that's why it's called a theory Which, by the way, learn how to draw anything video, my very first one, that breaks down everything I talk about with fundamentals. I really need a bigger desk. It's hard to draw comfortably with limited desk space. I know how that used to be. Um, and I still have some problems with that with my desk. I learned how to be a little bit more minimal minimalistic. Like, for example, how many manga do you have sitting next to you? Um, 
how much tools that you aren't using twice a day, five times a day are right next to you. <laughs> you kind of got to limit the space of stuff, like the stuff around you. I guess you got to have more drawers to put it in. But your desk might be, is, might be probably smaller than mine. Do you play games, Kuzo? Yes, I play Bloodborne uh, now and then. How do you draw guns? Uh, you can pretty much just look up guns, and guns are really based on uh, a crap ton of perspective. <laughs> because they're, they're a bunch of cylinders and like rectangular shapes. That's all they are. You could literally just sit here with a perspective and build a whole freaking gun out of cylinders. You just build a whole gun out of cylinders and rectangles. Hey, what's up, JX21? <laughs> Music intensifies. How do you draw a person drawing? How do you draw a person on something looking down? Uh, perspective, man. I like. That's all there is to it. You gotta learn the perspectives. Like you take you take a person, you're saying they're looking down. I'm guessing this is gonna be the horizon line. Um, general horizon line. If they're on a building, technically it's not the horizon line, but it's their vanishing point that they're standing on. Their horizon. And then what? They're probably gonna be standing, what, this is the edge of the building, and they're standing here. Let's say their feet are right here. You, are gonna have a three-point perspective, or, or you could do a two-point perspective. It could even be one-point perspective because when you take that that point and you move it all the way down, you don't have to be looking up technically. Um, but this pretty much, uh, this you're not gonna want to build it the way I'm building it here. But Perspective, my guy. Oh, of course, this is a very general breakdown. <clears throat> I have not watched Vinland Saga. I just haven't, um, mostly because it's subtitled. 
shoot me. <laughs> um, like I said, I like to watch my anime, not read it. So. I've heard it's really good. And I really want to give it a shot. That's why I haven't watched Jujutsu Kaisen. From what I know, there's no dub to it. All right. I, I, if I really, really want to watch an anime, like, really, really want to watch it, I will watch the dub. I will. Um, most, I would, I would really want to have to watch, I would really want to watch it, though. Like, I would, it, it would have to be an overwhelming passion that I've been waiting a long time for. Because I just feel like I enjoy it more when I can sit there and watch it and enjoy the animation without looking at letters. The whole time. I know some people are gonna be like, but the Japanese subtitle, the Japanese voice acting is just so much better. And I'd be like, I don't understand Japanese. Why? Why would it? <laughs> I don't understand it. I love Japanese. It's just I, do, I just don't understand it. What? Where? Jujutsu Kaisen's fully dubbed now. Where? Where? Is it on Funimation? Come on. Wait. Is it? Wait. Did Crunchyroll start dubbing? I know they dubbed uh, 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 Tokyo Revengers, and I started watching that one. Nah, dude. What? Okay. See, now you got me excited. Hey, is there any tips for drawing faster? Yeah, that is... Uh... Oh, what the? No, I don't want to play this. Crunchyroll. Jujutsu Kaisen. It is dubbed. All right, see you guys later. We're gonna end the stream. Um. Okay. <laughs> oh, dang. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna watch that. Shoot. Do you try anime on pirate sites? First of all, bad question, because I just said I watch dubbed. Pirate sites do not have dubbed, and if they do, uh, that's very surprising. But no, I, I don't. Um, I don't agree with pirate sites. You use them, more power to you. Uh, I'm an artist, <laughs> and I, I'm literally... If, if I had an anime, they're literally the person they, I'm literally the person they'd be stealing from, so screw that. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I do not agree with that. And you'd be like, well, they don't really, uh, they don't really, uh, the anime doesn't really make that much mo that money for, for, for an author. I still don't agree with it. It's, it's, it's content that is being stolen, put up on a website for free. I don't read any, uh, manga anymore that's like that either i do have to say one thing which is a bad but good but bad thing about piracy is it is pushing these uh these companies to be more proactive and becoming better companies so people don't have to resort in going to piracy sites so that's the only thing i do say that they are bringing to the table but they're still breaking the law quite literally breaking the law do i play genshin impact no i do not i heard it's good that would be cool to play though um at some point we've got 151 people in here with 160 likes good to see everyone thank you for popping in um kuzo draw among us bam <laughs> Do you think of learning anatomy by copying some studies? Did you or others artists for what? Do you think learning anatomy by copying some studies did you did by you or others oh did by you or others are helping or it's not helpful and it be better if you are learning by real reference. Okay. There's a bit of a, a breakdown between two of these things. So you're talking about if you're learning from, I don't know if you're talking about, it sounds like you're talking about like realism when you say real reference. 
uh, because something someone else broke down is real reference. So if it's actually well done and it's good, let's be clear about this. If the way someone broke something down is good and it makes sense to what the original subject material is, yes, that is completely valid to study. Um, it is, as long as you're not learning something that they're teaching you is wrong. And that's one reason why I'm actually brushing up my tutorial, uh, my, my torso tutorial on my Patreon, which, by the way, it's still valid. It's still good, the one that I have, but I'm kind of uh, adding more depth to why things are the way they are. And yeah, it's gonna be, I, I like it. But um, yeah, so it, it's totally fine to go off other people's drawings. Uh, other people's reference material that they've drawn because what are they doing? They're compacting the material down into something that's more eatable compared to if you're looking at uh, a full-on realistic body, you're going to be literally dissecting that thing. And when you're a beginner, it's going to be much easier for someone. This is why I completely um, always advocate for the idea of look at these basic shapes that I'm drawing right now. Boom, boom, boom. Now, you guys have seen me draw a billion bodies over here over and over again. What's one thing you see in common when I do this? Well, they're super simplified. Well, what happens next? I then overlay the more complicated body structures, the muscle material over this. I add it in based on how I've created the structure. So that is what I'm saying is good because if you learn these basic shapes and you can draw them in perspective, all you have to do is learn the form and the actual overlaying of the actual anatomy for this to make complete sense. Or for you to learn the anatomy in general, I, guess I should say. All your favorite Naruto character. It would be Naruto. <laughs> Do a let's play plat. I'm guessing, I'm guessing you're saying let's play on the channel. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, play any games on the channel. I'm not gonna be that artist. <laughs> I. I'm an, I'm an art channel. I considered it one time and I was like, nah. So I considered it one time and an artist that I liked decided to play video games and I was like, oh, they went live. And I went to go look and they were playing a video game and I was like, I was disappointed. And I was like, okay, I, I guess I don't want to be that guy. Like if you see me go live, I want them to kind of expect what they're going to get. Do you think there's a dub version of Vinland Saga? Okay, it's picked up by Amazon. So it could be because it's been around for so long, but I don't know, I'll check afterwards. That would be dope though. Uh, do you like Japanese history? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I used to be a super weeb. I used to, you know, when I was young, I used to want to be, I'd be like, why were you born in Japan? And it wasn't because I didn't want to be my ethnicity. I didn't want to be American. I didn't want to be, you know, I, it wasn't necessarily that. It was the fact that I loved Japanese manga and the culture they displayed in it so much that I was sad that I had to be in a country that the living that I wanted to make wasn't even a possibility in that period of time. You guys, by the way, everyone here is lucky. We are all lucky to be living in this moment. For those of you who love anime and manga and want to do it for a living, like animation or manga, you are massively lucky to even be born right now because 15 years ago this this possibility of making a living online was not a thing 15 years ago it was barely in its infancy if you were an artist you had to move to the place you wanted to get hired by you would have to yeah we really are, says Maya. It's, it's, it's amazing. People nowadays have their own problems with social media and stuff. It's true. It's, it's very addicting. Um, it's super immersive. 
and you get lost. That's why sometimes you just need to put down the phone. You need to go write your thoughts on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what it is. Leave your phone alone. Stay off the internet for a little while. Or if you do go on it, don't go on social media. Like it's 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 a very uh, it's just it's a very bad thing. Like I used to get stuck on YouTube a lot. Let's uh slowly draw something here. I used to get stuck on YouTube a lot, right? And I eventually got rid of that habit. I now only watch it now and then. It's only things that I kind of like. Um, last night, just to go through struggles of an artist, know that you're not alone. Um, last night, uh, I didn't feel like drawing from 11 o'clock all the way till about 3.30 at night. I did not feel like drawing at all. I just, there was something about it. Maybe I didn't work out. Maybe I haven't been getting enough physical exercise, um, which is also a very big thing for us humans. We do need some physical exercise. It doesn't matter if it's walking outside uh, for like 20 minutes or something, which by the way, is not a bad thing. Don't take your phone with you and if you do or, or if you do take your phone with you don't start pulling it out and going on social media and if you do pull your phone out go ahead go on Pinterest look at the drawings slowly walk look at them and try to break them down like that stuff or look at your surroundings trying to pick out perspective and stuff like that around you like and uh, one thing that I've started doing if I do go on a walk is uh, instead of just mindlessly walking which sometimes is good Sometimes you need a time to kind of let your brain rest. Uh, for those of you who are in school, this may not be as prominent for you. So, but for those of you who are, if you are fuzzy minded, and even if you are in school and you go home and you've been drawing for a little while and you're fuzzy minded, uh, a walk might help you. Or, you know, shooting a basketball, skateboarding, whatever you do. Uh, might help you clear your mind a little bit but what I do when I walk because okay I used to walk I walked to work when I worked uh, a normal job I've walked all my life to school uh, I used to walk a mile and a half to school and back every day uphill both ways no okay no it was uh, only uphill one way obviously but this is true every day uh, for like three years I walked to school about an hour and a half every day uh, sorry, it was not an hour and a half. It was a mile and a half every day. And so what I did was, because it took a little while to walk there, I started thinking of my stories on my way to school. So I let myself get lost in my own mind. I would use those times to think of my story. And that's when I actually thought of most of my stories I have is on my way to work or on my way to school. Ever since I started doing that realistic stuff, I started drawing a little less stylistically. Like, I was, I'm missing, like, the... It's okay to do this stuff. But I'm missing. I'm also missing some draftsmanship right now. Yeah, I definitely need to do some studies after this. 
you think about lying on your bed. Actually, I've thought about trying to do something kind of like that. So I would lay down and try to go to bed, and then I'll get all these like cool illustration ideas. And I was like, come on. I, that was definitely a double when I said come on, because I just dropped my pencil, and I was actually talking about the bed experience. Okay, got my pencil. <laughs> but uh, I would be like, come on, man. And I was thinking all these cool ideas. So I thought about maybe actually trying to like legitimately like put something in my bed like my ipad or something and just be like okay i'm 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 going to rest and then just lie down put my pillow over my head listening to some soft music or something and then just try to almost take a nap while putting myself in the sleep mindset and then right when i would get an idea maybe get up and write it down or um uh, draw it and i i haven't done it yet but i'm thinking about doing it I started thinking of my stories in the middle of English class. <laughs> not a good I not a good habit. Yeah, I, I mean, it, hey, yeah, not 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 necessarily a good habit. But if you come up with some good ideas, might as well jot them down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or in the car. Yeah, just make sure you stay on the road. But you may not be the person driving, so I don't know. Uh, Kuzo, can you draw animals? I've gotten this question quite a few times, actually. I'm surprised. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, no, but yes. I don't. I can't draw animals specifically off the top of my head. I know that on, on the basic uh, form of them, they have a muzzle, which, like I said, I break everything down into simplified form. So they have a muzzle, and then they have like a head, depending on the animal. This is a pretty basic shape for any animal's head. They got some ears, and voila, we got some sort of animal here that I could craft into an ugly looking chihuahua. Sorry if you have a chihuahua. Or like a fox or something. But in general, I if I want to draw a specific animal accurately, yes, I would need some reference, and I would only need reference so that way I could get the proportions down properly and the ratios down properly. Because from there, I already know the basic idea, the basic shape you could see here of some sort of animal. It's just a basic shape. Sorry if you have a chihuahua. <laughs> Ella. <laughs> Can you draw mechs? Uh, yeah, I can draw mechs. Wait, come on now. What? Hold up. I mean, first of all, I drew Ordinal Tempest, which is a more so organic mech series. On top of that, I drew this mechoid figure here. Looks like an Evangelion. Someone was like, looks like Evangelion, one of the Avas. And I was like, yep, that's pretty much what I based it off of. <laughs> it's up with people asking if you can draw random stuff. I don't know, it's pretty, uh, I guess, wondering that stuff is, it's pretty normal. Um, like I remember when I was, uh, trying to learn how to draw and I was like studying Naruto's art book, Kishimo's art, art book, <laughs> Naruto's art book, the art book of Naruto, uh, I noticed that Kishimoto had drawn like these monkeys and like dogs and I was like, the hell? <laughs> I was like, I can't draw that. Uh, so I was like, I wonder how many artists can draw that stuff that I don't know. They, do they just not draw it? Kind of like those people who think I have fa the same face syndrome. They don't see me draw other faces that often. So they may not actually know. People who still are pathetic, I uh, definitely agree. It's so nice when people actually know what you draw, <laughs> what you drew. <laughs> well, it's okay. I mean, like, some people are probably newer here. Gotta go by, says uh, Aubrey. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, 
Hope, hopefully I see you again and thank you very much for sticking around. Um, do you like One Punch Man? Yes, I do. I stopped reading it, though. And the second season was just... It was not horrible, but it was like it looked like dog poop compared to the first season and honestly i almost feel like them doing the first season the way they did was a disservice to how the rest of the seasons would look no matter what because it just looks so good it was done by such good uh artists kind of sucks you know What a coincidence, I was actually thinking of naming my manga, which I'm working on right now, the same name, but I guess I'll change it. Oh, you must be talking to, to someone else. I don't know if you're talking to me. First time seeing you in face cam. Well, good to see you here. Marac Mar Marca Marcus? Marcus? <laughs> Marcos. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've only been... I've been doing this for, like, a month and a half now. They don't believe you, <laughs> Kuzo. Uh, I was watching a video about a uh, tornado on YouTube last night, and I came with... I came with the idea of the Storm Chaser manga. Oh, you must have been talking about Kosh. Storm Chaser manga, which... I might make a one shot out of. Oh, that'd be cool. Anyways, I'm gonna go down here now. Trying not to insult One Punch Man. <laughs> LOL says Shiny Arc 32. Uh, any tips of people wanting to get into content creation? If you're talking about like doing like videos and stuff like this. I would say just start recording yourself drawing, put it up. Uh, you can do it real time. Um, I even suggest it just if you're afraid of talking, don't talk. The reason why I say start real time you, is because when you go into, okay, when you go into doing a time lapse, there are more things, move, way more moving parts. Let's just be completely clear, way more moving parts. One, um, you're gonna have more edits. Two, because you're gonna continuously stop and start, stop and start. You're gonna have more edits, so you're gonna have to edit it together way more frequently. Uh, two, you're gonna have to have some sort of music or audio put over. You, one, you have to find the music for it that's not copyrighted. Two, you have to decide if it's not, um, if it's not going, if you're not gonna have audio over it, that means the music has to be higher quality because like this music can be lower quality because it's in the background it's behind me talking it just has to be kind of there as a background noise music the, the the main thing that they're listening to while you're drawing it has to be higher quality it has to be interesting on top of that real time drawing when not talking even if there's some sounds in the background if you're just drawing the barrier of entry is your phone and youtube that's the barrier of entry nothing else barrier uh, phone well okay yeah you're gonna have to have a claw in order to actually um record it like have your phone above you but other than that you can do it with your phone and you can upload it to youtube from there you can build up and get better and better and learn how to edit things more you can try to do other stuff anyways let's move on okay All right, I guess I got a little bit of an idea in my head. Just something funny to draw. It's the first idea I got, at least, here, to draw something other than just doing random perspectives.
slow down, Kuzo, let's slow down and think. Slow down and think, okay. Time's it. All right, I am gonna have to get going here very, very soon. I should have probably pulled that hand out the other way, but I'll just do it like this. By the way, don't feel, if you see me drawing fast or something, don't feel pressure to be the person or you see someone else drawing fast, don't be the person that pressures yourself to try to draw fast when you're not ready to. Um, the reason why I mention this is because it will make you frustrated. Your stuff might look really bad and uh, it could hurt you in the long run. So like me, I'm trying to tell myself to slow down because a lot of my stuff was looking very sloppy on the other page. I wasn't thinking about it as much as I should have. There are times I can go fast. This time, there's a lot of information in my brain right now that I've been pushing into my brain these past few days. Like, I've been cramming information from 11 to like 6 in the morning. So 11 at night to 6 in the morning. I've just been cramming a bunch of information into my brain more than you probably should because if I, if I spent that time studying one specific subject, very specific subject, I would probably have it already pretty close to like down by now. So I've been cramming in a lot more than I should. And there's there's a lot going through my mind. So sometimes I need to re-remember the stuff that I've been learning. I need to recall it, which is a form of you eventually, your mind being like, oh, he's, oh gosh, oh my gosh, he's recalling this information I just, he just learned the other night. night. Oh wait, where is this information? Oh, there it is. And then it's like, it builds those, what are they called, synapses? I don't know, they're like connections in your brain. It starts building the pathway to that information. So they're not fully built yet, they're kind of like hanging there. So the more you go to that information that it's correct, it will build stronger pathways to that information. And then before you know it, you wanna know how to draw fast? That's how you draw fast. You take it slow. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's how you learn how to draw fast. That is literally the, like, the best way to describe that's how you draw fast. You, there are pathways to these things that you learn into your brain and in your brain, there are these pathways, you learn these things, they're not strong at first because you just learned them. If you do, that, do it over and over again, your brain's like, oh, this information's important, let me try to build this even more Bam, you start, you start memorizing it. That's the whole point of memorizing it. And if you do it enough, that's when permanent memorization comes in, even if you don't draw for a long time. Like this, this shape right here, I may get rusty on the flow of drawing it, like muscle memory, but I'm always gonna remember this shape. I've done it so many times. <laughs> But uh, that's where, when people will be like, how do you memorize something? How do you draw this? How do you do this? Uh, a lot of it has to do with rep the reason why people say, sometimes you will be like, okay, repetition, okay, repetition. No, sometimes people need to know why repetition works and not just saying it works. Um, it works because, in that explanation I gave, that's more of a scientific ex explanation, but it's the real explanation. It's the real truth. You build these pathways in your brain. You're such an inspiration for me. Hey, saw you on the most recent video, your comment, uh, Ink Drop Art. Uh, you are such an inspiration for me after watching your first manga video. Uh, I was hecka inspired to finish my story and make a comic, and thanks to you, I'm getting better. That's awesome, man. I'm glad. I'm always glad to hear when, um, when I'm helping people and my content's helping people. Do you think that your sketchbook anatomy practice 
videos are a good way to learn anatomy or it'd be better if you learn by something else sorry if my uh, it's fine your english is fine um so those videos they're specifically meant for when you sit there and watch me draw that and you're drawing along whatever it doesn't matter if you're drawing along even if you just sat there and watched me draw your mind is absorbing this this the, my strokes your <laughs> my strokes your your mind's absorbing the strokes your mind's absorbing how i'm doing this the process i'm doing it in uh the the, the rate i'm doing it in the the jolting of my strokes the smoothness of them man i'm saying strokes a lot um but basically if you watch someone do it okay I already explained this once before, but there was this UFC fighter that's at a highest, one of the highest levels, and he's been a champion for a while. And he said, when you're at the highest level, you can watch someone do something enough times, two, three, four times, and then go and almost execute it the same way they did. And if not the first time, you can get it in the first few times. Because once you're at the highest level, you have a certain level of control to be able to look at something someone else is doing and almost replicate it. So basically, if you get to a certain level in art, even if you're at a lower level in art, you'll start picking up these little things that you're watching in the video that will, in the long run, help you. But if you really, really, really want to learn something, you're going to have to go and actually break down these these, these things you want to learn. Uh, the torso, you're going to want to break down. The arms, you're going to want to break down. You're going to want to break down perspective, uh, the fundamentals, stuff like that. So. There is a point for, there is a reason for both of them. And by the way, this happened to me uh, from experience. And this isn't just something that I've heard from a UFC fighter, but when he said that, I was like, ah, I'm not crazy. <laughs> uh, like this is totally what happened to me. So I was, there's two things, two people. I watched Kim jong Gi draw a lot so what i would do is i would just have him playing up on the screen and i would just be drawing i'll look up watch him for like three minutes uh and then i'll draw sometimes i'll watch the whole thing and i'll keep drawing so right so that's pretty it's pretty fun you leave it there and then i also watched uh jim lee's streams and um i started picking up the way he did his strokes he would do like very angular a very angular strokes and I started picking those angular strokes up and I took them over to some of my work and I actually had someone comment on one of my videos your strokes remind me of uh, Jim Lee's and I was all like it's because I was watching his stuff and I picked up something that I liked from it and my mind started latching on to the way he did it and my my hand and my memory started doing it itself um, so it was, it was funny and it was very true, though, that I was taking inspiration from how he did his strokes. It's not as much in my work right now. Uh, it kind of fell out, although maybe I might bring some of it back. It would be kind of fun because I did like the way I did the strokes. It was much more angular. Um, when I would draw a circle, sometimes I would draw it more so like this, but then I would, like, refine it. You could tell. See that right there? Okay, I need to get my draftsman up, my drafts, drafts, draftsmanship up again. Sometimes you just need a practice. Do you live in Japan now? I live in the U.S. Hey, what's up, Skitty McBeetle over here, Skeet Skeet McBeet Beat with the super chat. Uh, monkey see, monkey do. That's how I learn too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty uh, good thing to do to watch other people actually draw. Your mind starts picking up tiny little things without you knowing it. And if you watch something multiple times, 
one thing, it might reinforce that. Two, it just gives you more, and you might pick up something different that they did too. So, But just letting you guys know, I do have to get going here. Um, it's been a super fun stream. Uh, I feel like I only started getting control of my work towards the end with this one. Um, I should have taken a little bit more time because I'm actually really tired uh, to, to think while I was drawing. Um, we got 146 people in here. It kind of sucks for leaving right now with so many people in here. We should try doing a really long stream once I'm feeling up to par and stuff like that because these long streams can really take a toll when you're drawing the whole time. But uh, thank you very much for the super chat again. Sorry it was towards the end, man. Uh, but yeah, in any case, super fun being here. Will I be streaming tomorrow? That's a big maybe. Um, I might. I might. It's actually a teeter totter. Keep an eye on my Twitter and my Instagram around the same time I normally do it, which is around five to six uh, MDT, Mountain Daylight Time. But um, yeah. In any case, super fun. Hopefully, everyone has a good day or night wherever they are. But in any case, see you guys in the next video, next stream. Peace out. Have a good one.